Ever since we started Solve for Why, we've just like been on this grassroots marketing campaign. What's up, Solve for Why? Hey, team for Solve for Why Academy. Good evening, Mr. Berkey, Mr. Soto, Mr. Young. What's up, everybody? Just a quick reminder, we're giving away one seat to next week's Academy. All you have to do is submit a one to two minute long video. I like it. I think it's like a, an easy way for us to reach out and connect with people who are interested in us. We just finished watching all the submissions. We came to a conclusion and we gave away a seat. What's up, Solve for Why? My name is Justin Russell. I'm a 26 year old from Denver, Colorado. I think Justin is super, super excited to be here. Like all my poker friends back home, they're like, dude, soak this in. This is such a good opportunity. And we have a little trick up our sleeve, Chin. What? We're giving away a second seat. It's just a, such a male-dominated field that I just think that being a woman that succeeds in it would be a statement in and of itself. Marley's a little bit more difficult to read uh, just because she's been around poker longer. She lives with poker players. I try to not think about what other people think about me and I try to get better at shaking it off and just compete with my own self. I think that we see a need in the community for a lot of people to actually traverse through and out of the learning curve rather than just be kind of stuck in a rut for a lifetime. My background is mostly in 2-5 and 5-5, five five, um, and I am staked. Um, and my staker actually, like this week, told me he wants me to start taking more shots in bigger games. My expectation is just to be kind of like almost start from zero in a way, come in open-minded, and definitely bring in the questions that I have around poker in general, around the business side of poker, being a pro. You know, I do play an exploitative strategy because I play lower stakes mostly, but I always want to know, I always ask questions about GTO and wanting to be balanced. These next three days, it's, man, just really expecting to think in a completely different way and like see things that I've never seen before. My biggest goal in this experience was to just get a, like a better understanding of how to um, play against tougher opponents. So I think Justin and Marley both fall into an unstructured, more like field type scenario. I honestly felt like people weren't playing how they normally would. I don't know, I think it was maybe like different because they knew that, you know, they were in a class and they wanted to like do crazy shit and I tried to play as close to like what I would normally do. If people come here and they don't play how they would normally play, they're just sacrificing a ton of value because the commentary that Christian and Berkey are putting over the top of the gameplay. Duncan open uh, to 40, Marley chooses to fold 6-5 diamonds in middle position. The suited connector portion of ranges is overplayed pre and like probably underplayed post. So I'm very indifferent to people eliminating that portion of their range. I'm much more intrigued by why they would choose to do so, I guess. And then a couple of rotations later, she gets the same uh, hand type facing an early position open, but now she calls. She just folded 6-5 seated earlier right. uh, in like a similar formation. So I'm curious of like what, how her approach is in, this, in these spots. Um, so I think like with her decisions pre-flop, I think it's very clear that though she may be able to rationalize why she chose one over the other, it's going to be uh, a matter of she's constructing randomized versus linear. As it pertains to Justin, he plays pretty tight. He like limp called uh, 11X with like Queen Jack suited and it's like, yeah, fine, maybe that's okay. But if you don't have a constructed plan on how you're gonna win this hand without hitting, then it becomes an issue. No I think for him, forward. this is a byproduct of his, uh, his environment, right? So he's probably doing 
almost no bluffing in his game, which means he's going to be doing nearly no bluffing here. And it's just normal because he's playing low stakes. People aren't really fighting. So we're going to need to like build him up a little bit as, as a fighter. He's like a nice kid. So like maybe he's not in his instincts, but we're going to have to like get him there. This is the part that, that I hate the most. I say that because like I've never been one to like play with constraints. So the idea of sitting down and listing out all the hands that I think are, are hands I should play was a frustrating endeavor. But it was necessary. It was, uh, it was a big part that allowed me to uh, you know, not lose five million again. Um, so starting with why do we choose the hands that we choose? These people come uh, in with two hours of sleep sometimes because you know, they learn this stuff on day one and they're like, oh, I got to go play. I want to implement this. I want to see what happens. So one of the guys in the academy, uh, Chris, he's definitely a more advanced player. He kind of came to me and was like, hey, I'm going to play at the win. I'm sure you'll be playing 1-3, but like in between hands, we can chat and kind of discuss things. And he finished his 2-5 session, and he was like, hey, man, like I think you can take this 2-5 table. I think it would be good for you. So I went and sat in his seat when he left and then had a four-digit score. So it's good. It's cool. So basically, we want to be able to keep our frequencies intact to a point where uh, we're not looking at an A7-4 board and we're afraid to see bet because we no longer possess credibility. Um, this is why we're gonna be you know, manipulating our pseudo connectors in a very specific manner. Uh, you'll see people who are like 25, 30 blinds and they can't help themselves. They always have to open their pseudo connectors. It's like, what are you doing? You should be waiting for like top tier value hands. Like you're just adding these hands in for no good reason and that makes it more difficult for you to play eights now whenever you're presented the same scenario. Um, so I think Marley is, like she has that fight and she has that like will to win. But uh, I'm curious to see if like when she faces adversity, if she still has that fight or if she just like shrivels down. All right. yeah. Marley has a lot of raw talent. You can build the construction. You can learn all of these things. They're all quantifiable things that you can learn. You can't start with the construction and the calculation and then find raw talent. I think Marley has a really high ceiling. Correct. And, you know, like she told me, she's like very polarizing. A lot of people either hate her or they think she's the sweetest. Both of those things are advantageous to her. People have taken a hard stand against how they feel against you. And that means that their emotions are going to have some sort of like preconception in every single hand that they play against you. The second someone labels you as really lucky, <laughs> you can never lose again. Yeah, that's pretty true. Right? It's just like, that just doesn't exist, man. And Justin seems like he's amped. He fucking wants to learn all the time, too. But he's nervous as hell. He asked Elliot the question today. He said, is there a reason that I don't feel like myself once I won the seat to come to the Salt for Y Academy? He's like, I just, I feel like I'm not taking in the information like I usually do. I'm not playing during the gameplay like I usually do. So the thing is, Justin's not used to, there's a lot of things that are going on. It's like, he's not used to this kind of aggression. These chips are probably foreign, you know, yeah. to him. Yep. Um, so it's a lot of like, I just want to make a hand and get some momentum yeah. going, you know? I'd like to see him, you know, acknowledging that the game may be too big or too action packed or too fierce and that he's trying to realize way too much. And that's a problem because like, he's probably printing in the games that he plays playing this way because mm -hmm. nobody is doing anything correct but it limits him it, it decreases his ceiling so much because he can never get out of that pool marley on day one didn't win but didn't lose a lot she ran the three barrel bluff it didn't work out on day two she mashed absolutely mashed I think she won like, I want to say 8,500 today. Obviously at the end I won a big flip in a like five bet pot with Ace King versus tens. Oh, well, they're all in? Yeah, they're all in. Oh, wow. Wait, he cold forward? He cold forward, Marley smashed home, and they're all in. How deep were they? So it looks like she calls for, I mean, Eric calls for 4.6K. Okay, that's way too deep to be getting all in with either one of these hands. I mean, that's just like an obscene amount. But we haven't seen Marley get in or get out of line at all. No, agreed. It's I think that the game is so aggressive that when they have tens plus, ace, queen plus, they're just felting it. 
I won an hour of free private coaching, which is awesome. And, you know, they can pick anybody. So if they really want to learn something, I'm, I mean, I'm available. Uh, Day three today, last day, sad day, to be honest. Yeah? Yeah, man. This has been so good, so fun. You're just hanging out with a bunch of poker players that are miles better than you, learning, and it's like, ugh, I don't want to leave. Polo to the float -o. Float -o. You already know, though. Know it's though. Adamville for real. You see a hoe, just take a photo. photo. I'm repping that's on photo with a fofo -fo on your brodo. Bro Cause that Jodo thought that he could rob a player for some dodo. Yesterday was a little intense for me. Just a lot of learning, obviously. And they built a video and released that that night. So I just went home, watched that, and kind of you know soaked in the comments that they gave. Oh, that's and why it's tough. Justin Folds. You have to go call call there. And gets shown the bluff. This guy is ruthless. They'll go around like each seat and obviously talk about each hand, but they'll also talk about just the player in general and you know what they need to work on, what they're good at. She's using equity as a guide. She's capitalizing on all the, the value spots as well as the bluffs. It's gonna be really, really difficult for people to kind of shake their subjective opinions and start just treating her as, as an absolute killer. So it's good to kind of compare my perspective of those players to their perspective of those players, as well as hear what comments they have on myself. Yeah, and he admits to being a lot on the tighter side of things, so it's gonna be really, really difficult going through the mental calisthenics to get him from realization to capitalization. Like, I'm without a doubt the worst player here, and I don't wanna say that in a bad way, because if I wasn't here, then I'd still be making the same mistakes, and I wouldn't be learning the things that I'm learning. On range neutral boards, when you introduce a check raise, when you're faced with only a call and you catch a clean turn, that range neutrality has now shifted towards range advantage to the aggressor. Uh, and that's because people are not gonna just defend here with a call with queen 10, because they're afraid of like a jack, a heart or whatever. So when you check raise hands like aces with the ace of hearts and you face a call, um, you know, a three is range advantage now us. Uh, and when it falls their advantage, now we just understand like, we need to shift back to realization and understand that like when you face a three bet, it's mostly gonna be like a range of hands that have that equity has you crushed. Like it's just gonna be combo draws, two pairs, sets, etc. Yeah, I feel like we definitely got the most out of today out of the three days and it is so much information thrown at you at once. And that's what everyone's saying. They're like, dude, just wait till day three. Day three is dense and I'm like, dude, day two was dense for me. It's like humbling because you do these, these things and you just realize that you're terrible at poker. And it's just like, you know, you've got to look so far to go and like there's so much to learn and it never stops. I think I need to realize that I'm not going to master it all today by any means. Just be here, be present, soak in as much as you can. I feel awesome. I'm stoked for this like last round. What do it mean when you wake up and still see dreams? You're not cut from the fucking cloth. You get cut from the fucking team. I run it up. Don't run track with me. A double cup filled with a couple of things. I'm addicted to killing things. Google me and see casualties. I run it up. I wear my gold teeth in the crib. Just so when my mama see me, she know just how I live. Let's get it. How we moving? I got that guap and I'm cooling. I got that dope and I'm cooling. Could fuck your bitch, but I'm cooling. I film it, then make a movie, then sell it on pay per view, and then dedicate it to you, man. I do this shit just to do it. Run it up. I am totally converted now into uh, living the dream as a solve for why. Attendee, I'm so stoked about it. Marley was very much a pleasant surprise. She's just ready to battle at all times. And, you know, she wasn't precise all the time and, and she kind of lacked calculation in some spots, but her thought process was there. She's got the raw talent. She just needs some calculation behind the thing she's doing. And I don't think you can just do that overnight. I don't think we've really gotten too many people who are, are new to the game and haven't failed yet that are that hungry. Like, she reminds me of Chin in that regard. I think if she puts in however many hours it's going to take for that one thing to just click, which it's going to be a light bulb moment one day for her, and I think she's going to be a killer. My man Justin, he's really in that level one, make the best hand, try to navigate the showdown as quickly as possible stage. But he seems really open to the idea that that's not the way 
to make a living at this game? Honestly, the best approach for me is to get some individual coaching right away. Uh, I'm here to, I'm here for like three more days. So it's like, well, let's use that. It's kind of exciting. Like, I don't know that we've ever gotten somebody this early, right? So it's, it's kind of like a fresh ball of clay. Chin gave him a lot of shit, but I think it's like the big brother, little brother complex that we kind of passed on to him. I know that they exchanged numbers. He's actually gonna stop by here again tomorrow. I'm um, kind of looking forward to see if there's gonna be a progression there. I literally have come so far in the last three days. I've learned so much. It's insane. And I have two more hours of free coaching, so I'm gonna learn even more. It's awesome. It's insane. I feel like, like I feel like all this is a dream. Honestly, my confidence is super low right now. The feeling is crappy, but it also like builds a ton of motivation and a ton of grind. Not even necessarily work harder, like I'm gonna work harder, but it's because of this, I know how to work smarter, which is gonna be key to being efficient and just keep going for sure.